Hello, I am Seamus Dunahoo of EVE University, and this is episode 4 of How to Survive EVE Online. As usual, let's go through our login checklist. Let's check our skill training queue. Alright, that looks good. Uh, for reference, I believe it's been a few hours since I filmed episode 3, so these are the skills that I've trained in the meantime. I forget exactly where I left off. So, Survey 3, Electronics Upgrades 1, Reprocessing 1, Afterburner 1, Repair Systems 2, Archaeology 1, so now I can use a real honest-to-goodness Relic Analyzer, and Mining Frigate Level 2. Uh, let me double-check. I've already got Industry. Can I inject Salvaging? No. Can I inject Hacking? No. Uh, survey and Mining Frigate I already have. Alright. Corporation, wars, our wars. Of course an NPC corporation is not at war with anyone, but you want to get into that habit, and I don't have any mail. Alright. So I came back from running those two courier missions in the last episode, and I also stopped by a bar to pick up that stuff that I purchased on the market. Uh, the cap rechargers and capacitor power relays I fit to my ship and they make a significant difference. So without them, I can't run everything cap-stable. With them, I can run everything cap-stable all the time, and I will not run out of capacitor. Unless something big and mean comes around and starts energy neutralizing me, but that's an, an entirely different problem which you probably won't encounter in the tutorials. I've trained up the prerequisites for afterburners, so I'm going to clear out one of my mid-slots and stick on the afterburner. And the afterburner consumes capacitor energy to make my ship go faster. So instead of going at 385 meters per second, I can go 796 meters per second. Significantly faster. I also brought some f small focused afocal maser ones. These are just a fancier version of... Uh, the basic small-focused beam laser. Uh, I have a separate video about meta levels, I believe, uh, where I talk about the compare tool. Uh, I will not take up your time with that in this particular series. Suffice it to say, the compare tool exists, and you can compare uh, similar modules or slightly different modules and to s see how the numbers differ between them. Uh, but anyway, I have some better weapons, so I'm going to drag out my frequency crystals, right-click, clear the group, unfit the modules, and I'm going to drag in my small focused lasers. Now shift, left-click, and drag, shift, left-click, and drag, uh, right-click, stack all, drag the crystals here, and that loads them up. And... Are these beam or... hold on. Are these beam or... Oh, these are beam lasers. Okay. I thought I got the pulse lasers for some reason. The beam lasers are fine. So beam lasers have a much greater range than pulse lasers. I'll be able to smack things out to nine kilometers away. There is a downside. Uh, the small focused... Uh, the beam lasers only have a tracking speed of 0.1 radians per second, compared to the Gatling pulse lasers tracking speed of 0.3 radians per second. Uh, tracking speed is a general measure of how well that turret can hit targets moving around you. So if you've got a frigate-sized target moving around you at 0.2 radians per second, that's not a problem with your pulse laser your beam laser is going to have issues. So, generally the long-range turrets are good at hitting targets at long range, but not very good at hitting targets orbiting around them at close range. The short-range turrets are the opposite. They deal well with targets that move around them quickly in circles, but not targets that are far away. So, I'm going to close the fitting window, and let me take a look at what the business... Okay, so the business agent wants us to get a tracking computer off the market and give it to him. So right-click, view market details, and there are tracking computers available here in Depari. 
they are less expensive in Amar. I forgot to pick one up there, but the markup is not huge. Only 20,000 versus 11,000. Uh, I've got the ISK to spare. I've also got almost a million. And I only need one tracking computer. All right. Uh, so we'll click accept. Uh, the game will throw text at you about the market. And we'll give you some skill books. Trade, we can inject. One of the things to note about the market, a lot of things are bought and sold by players. Remember when I said that if the expiry time is less than 90 days, that's a player sell order? These are not being sold by NPCs. Players happen to know that new players such as yourself will need this particular module for this particular mission, so they sell these modules on the market right here in Station for a somewhat marked up price. Uh, you can get it cheaper from Amar, like I said, but it's convenient to get it from here. Again, uh, this is also why I chose Imperial Academy. I can conveniently see the market in Amar uh, from where I am. If I chose any other Amarian school, I would have to travel across a regional border before I could see the prices in Amar, because the other two Amarian schools are not in the domain region. This is the domain regional market. But a lot of things are bought and sold by players. Um, a lot of the economic activity is driven by the fact that in EVE Online, when ships explode, you're going to need to replace it. You need to get you need to build or purchase a new ship, and if you're buying a new ship, you're usually buying it from another player who actually did build the ship. The market can be quite extensive and can be an entire form of gameplay all entirely unto itself. Uh, let's see, mass production requires industry 3. And retail requires trade 2. All right. So just for the purposes of skill cleanup, let me slot in Industry 2 and 3. Let me slot in Trade 1 and 2. And click Apply. And I'm not going to worry about that further. Complete the mission. And go on to Request Next Mission. Uh, and here... The agent wants us to use a relic analyzer and shoot some hostiles and use a relic analyzer on a container. Remember when I said that we finished archaeology? I can use a real relic analyzer. So let's see. Uh, I'll just search. Relic analyzer. Ship equipment. Relic analyzer 1. Uh... Okay, here's one for only a mildly marked up price in Dipari. That's good. Uh, so I don't have to use a civilian relic analyzer anymore. I can use the real thing. And the difference between a civilian relic analyzer, this is a virus coherence of 25 and a virus strength of 10, whereas a real honest-to-goodness relic analyzer 1 has a coherence of 40 and a virus strength of 20. So I'll find it much easier to hack through uh, relic networks. And we shall see that difference in action. So let's accept the mission. Uh, da, 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 da. Close this. Okay, so I'm not cap stable anymore with everything running, but chances are I'm not going to use the relic analyzer at the same time as the afterburner, so I should be okay. Balancing the books, warp to location. Warp drive active.
All right, activate the acceleration gate. Let's see, the relic analyzer uses 20 gigajoules every 10 seconds. All right. All right, let's lock some targets. And I'm going to shoot at the closest guy, and he explodes right away. The benefits of having range. Now, granted... Hold on, let me turn on my afterburner. That would be Alt F1 or Option F1 for my fellow Mac users. Uh, the downside of having a long-range weapon is that it generally doesn't do as much damage per second as the short-range weapons. The, that, that's the other trade-off besides the... Um, Tracking speed issue. All right. I'm gonna s save this location as a safe spot. Because again, this is a random point in space and none of this stuff will be here after I turn in the mission. All right, let's target lock those three things. And by the way, the reason I had you train target management to level two or three earlier is because without target management, your skills limit you to two targets at a time. There are two limits on how many things you can lock. One is a skill-based limit. The other is an electronics-based limit. The... Oh. All right, I can cut the afterburner. The electronic space limit is shown in your fitting window, right here, under the targeting header. So I can lock up to four targets at a time with this ship, just because it's a tormentor. Tap F1, there we go. Sh control space bar to full stop. And you know what, let me grab the loot out of the wrecks. So the electronic space limit is four targets. The skill based limit is two plus your level in target management, plus your level in advanced target management. So if we look at the skills section under the targeting header, I have target management level three. So I can lock up to five targets if the ship's electronics could support that. My tormentor does not, so I'm still limited to four targets. There are modules that will help increase the electronics limit. But anyway, let's run the data, I'm sorry, the relic analyzer. Oh look, a firewall. I if ha It has 20 coherence, but my virus is 20 strength. I attack it, it dies immediately, and it cannot smack my virus around. That's the benefit of being able to use a real relic analyzer. That went a lot easier than all of my previous hack attempts. You noticed? So let's loot everything, and return to the station. <laughs> I want to talk about real, honest-to-goodness salvaging at some point, uh, but I'm forgetting what the prerequisite for that is. All right. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Uh, let's talk to the business agent, complete the mission. There we go, request the next mission. Uh, this is a short range courier mission, just next door. Um, let me set that aside for the moment. Uh, salvaging, requires mechanics three. All ah, right, I should be done with that in about 40 minutes. Let's talk to the industry agent. And the industry agent wants us to make 20 units of cap boosters. Right, I should have done this first, that way I could have go done my relic hacking while these cap boosters were cooking. Let's accept the mission. Alright, so this blueprint needs some mexalon, some pyrite, some tritanium. 
we have Tritanium. Pyrite comes from Scordite. Mexilon, let me show info on that, uh, comes from Plagioclase and Pyroxeres. You can wander around a little bit in different solar systems and look for Plagioclase and Pyroxeres and go mine those asteroids and come back. Uh, I am not going to waste your time with that. You could just buy the Pyrite and the Mexilon that you need off the market. Uh, some of it is available here in Tipari. There's Pyrite. And some Mexilon is also available in Tipari for a jacked up price. Um, 94 isk per unit rather than the 47 isk per unit of Mar. But you're only going to need 26 Mexilon. Remember, this is per batch. You need 13 per batch. You're making two batches. Um, or you could right-click the actual cap boosters and view the market details. You could just buy 20 cap boosters right here in Tipari. That's probably the faster option. I'm not going to waste your time. But if you want to go manufacturing, you can buy the minerals. Then you can right-click the blueprint and use blueprint. And there we go. And you can type in two job runs. And if you once you have the if you've come back already with the Mexilon and the Pyrite, you can run this job. Again, I'm not going to waste your time. I'm going to complete the mission. It, this wasn't a green check mark because I didn't update the window after I got the cap boosters. Uh, let's request the next mission, and this is also a courier mission, also to Arbaz. So let's talk to the business agent, and we can run both these missions at the same time. So right-click Arbaz 4, Moon 11, Civic Court Tribunal. Right-click Arbaz 6, Moon 8, Quave Company Warehouse. Depending upon which school you're operating out of, uh, the system next door might only have one station in it. Depending. Let's accept both missions. We need the central data core and the cap booster 25s. Close, close, undock. And we're going to warp to Stargate Arbaz. These red circles that you keep seeing, uh, these triangles represent mobile depots. It's something that you can plop down in any old random spot in space, and it will hold stuff for you. The thing is, other players can shoot at it uh, without Concord intervention. They become suspects, so you could shoot back. You could shoot them if you wanted to once they're suspects, uh, but then they can shoot back at you. So I don't generally advise that. But mobile depots are used for uh, holding stuff in space for you so that you don't have to dock up in a station and then undock from the station. The red circles indicate that they've been shot at and um, that they have a, what's called a reinforcement timer. I'm not going to go into mu too much further detail on that. Reinforcement timers are their own entire subject unto themselves. Um, it's not something you need to worry about too much unless you start playing around with control towers or Docking mobile depots. Now, I set my waypoints in a particular order, so my autopilot is expecting me to visit those stations in a particular order. I deliberately docked out of order to demonstrate something. Uh, so the game still thinks I need to go to Arbaz 4 Moon 11 Civic Court Tribunal first, and then Arbaz 6 Moon 8 Quave Company Warehouse second, because that's the order I specified it in, so it's not taking this icon off. But I'm already in Arbaz 6 Moon 8. I don't care too much about the order, so I can remove that waypoint. But I'm demonstrating that so that you understand how the autopilot route works. The next waypoint won't be removed until you actually visit it, or until you manually remove it yourself. Uh, I talked to the wrong agent. This is not all green check marks. Let me talk to this agent. There we go. And I'm going to complete the mission. Something I forgot to mention last episode if the reward 
is an item of any sort, then the item will appear in your item hanger in the station where the agent is located. So I now have another Overdrive Injector System 1 waiting for me in Depari 2 Imperial Academy. This is not Depari 2 Imperial Academy, so my new Overdrive Injector System did not show up down here. Let me undock. Let's go to the other station. And while we're taking the time to run from station to Stargate to station, uh, let me open up the escape menu. Something you may find useful. Under the audio tab, I like to click on advanced audio settings. You can make certain kinds of sounds much louder than others. The sound of other players warping in on you, you can make that much louder. The sound of your shield warning, the sound of your low armor warning, the sound of warning that you are taking structure damage, the sound, the warning sound for your capacitor is starting to run empty. You can turn all of those to be much louder. You can configure that however you like. Uh, let's talk to this agent. Uh, everything's green check marks. Complete the mission. And again, the limited social adaptation chip will be located in Depari 2 Imperial Academy. And the game is going to throw text at you about implants, so I'll discuss that in a moment, but I want to actually have the implant in front of me before I do that. As background information first, however, all of the skills that you train, if you show info on them, they have a primary attribute and a secondary attribute. In the case of mechanics, that's intelligence and memory. What does that mean? Your character has attributes. S to start off with, it's 20 perception, 20 memory, 20 willpower, 20 intelligence, 19 charisma. The rate at which you generate skill points in a skill is the primary plus one half of the secondary every minute. So because mechanics is intelligence memory, it's going to take my intelligence score plus half of my memory score, and that's how many skill points I generate in mechanics every minute. I've got 20 intelligence, 20 memory, as I said before. 20 plus half of 20 is 20 plus 10, which is 30. So every minute I'm generating 30 skill points in mechanics. Let me dock. Boom. Boom. I don't know if you heard those two sounds, but those were the third party warps. Players either coming into, uh, going into, or dropping out of warp. But yeah, uh, there's the mechanic skill. I need 8,000 skill points total to bring it up to level 3. I'm at 7,143, and this will tick up once every 2 seconds. 30, it'll tick up 30 times every minute. So that's attributes. Different skills will have different attributes. Trade is willpower charisma. Electronic upgrades is intelligence memory. Amar frigate is perception willpower. So the higher your attributes, the faster you will train skills. Implants can help uh, incre will increase your attributes. And the game will give you the cybernetic skill book. You need to train this to at least level one. Uh, and it's under the Neural Enhancement tab, so let's slot that in after Mechanics and click Apply. So once, mecha once Cybernetics is trained up to level 1, uh, this limited social adaptation chip will give me a plus 1 to Charisma if I right-click the implant and plug in. I can't do that right now because I don't have Cybernetics level 1, but once I plug in this implant, now I will have Charisma 20 points rather than 19 points. The trade and retail skills will train faster as a result of that. Imp in the current version of EVE Online, implants go as high as plus fives. Uh, 
don't believe the claims about plus sevens, um, those were put into the database by some CCP designer, but never actually implemented for anything. So the best you have are plus five, uh, available are plus fives, but those are very expensive. It's worth keeping in mind, it's worth noting rather, that any augmentation, any augmentations, any implants that you have, your implants will be destroyed if you are pod killed. Implants are also destroyed if you remove them from your head. And implants go in particular slots. This is a slot 5 implant. So as long as there's a limited social adaptation chip in my head, I can't put another slot 5 implant in there. I have to destroy the implant that's already present in slot 5 because before I can put a new slot 5 implant into my head. So yeah, implants are destroyed when you remove them. They are destroyed when you are pod killed. Uh, there's an entire int other subject about jump clones, which I will not cover in this series, but you can have alternate bodies called jump clones, and you can switch between bodies so that you can choose which implants to benefit from, which also means if you're benefiting from them, you're also putting them at risk. That will be the subject of another video. Uh, but anyway, uh, click apply, close this, and let's talk to the business and industry agents again. The business agent wants me to get two afterburners. Uh, I only have one at the moment, and I want to keep an extra afterburner around anyway. He wants me to buy these afterburners off the market. Let me right click, view market details. He doesn't care how I get them, he just cares that I get them somehow and players are selling afterburners on the market right here in station. So I'm gonna get two of those. Click accept. Everything's green check marks, complete the mission, request the next mission. And the agent wants me to manufacture 50 infrared crystals for him. He'll provide a blueprint for this purpose. Uh, you will need tritanium. Mexilon and Isogen. If you want to go mining for this stuff, again, the Mexilon comes from Plagioclase and Pyroxeres. Uh, the Isogen comes from Kernite or Omber. Uh, so you can find asteroids with those minerals and go mining them. You need to make 50 of these crystals, so you're going to need 50 times the materials listed here. 200 Tritanium, 150 Mexilon, 400 Isogen. You can right-click each mineral and just buy it straight off the market, either from a MAR or from uh, whatever school station you're in. Just make sure you do compare your prices. In Deepari right now, Isogen is 180 interstellar credits per unit. In a MAR, it's 114. Um, or alternately, if you don't want to buy the minerals, uh, you can also just buy infrared crystals directly. The agent gives us a blueprint we can get the minerals and manufacture from the blueprint. Uh, but he just wants 50 infrared crystals. He doesn't care how we get them. So if you want to buy 50 of those right here in Depari, you can do that. Right now, they're running about 2,000 interstellar credits per unit as I record this, but the market changes. Eventually, this sell order will run out. This seller is only selling 160 crystals at this price. I have 1.3 million esque, it'll be fine. And I'm going to have a bonus reward of 262,000 isk anyway. So I'm going to buy the infrared crystals, just to be quick about it, accept the mission, complete the mission, and that is it. We are done with the business chain. Let's talk to the industry agent. The industry agent wants us to manufacture a civilian Amar shuttle. Uh, there's no way around this. Civilian Amar shuttles are not a standard market item. Uh, you will have to actually make use of this blueprint. So let's just accept the mission. Uh, ignore the cargo capacity warning. You're manufacturing it here in station. Let's close. Uh, this civilian Amar shuttle needs 2778 tritanium. We've got extra Veldspar lying around. Let's just reprocess all of it. We're not going to need raw Veldspar for anything. And now we have more than 2,778 Tritanium. 
So let's go to the blueprint, right click, use the blueprint. Give it a moment. We're only running one job. We're going to click start. And it's going to take 4 minutes, 40 seconds for this to finish. I will skip ahead. Alright, I have skipped ahead to the part where uh, the manufacturing job has completed. Um, poor planning on my part. I should have been doing something more useful uh, at the same time as this. But anyway, let's deliver. And we can talk to the agent. Here's our civilian Omar shuttle. Everything is green check marks, so let's complete the mission. And request the next mission. And here we need to use a mining laser to coax out a particular pirate out of hiding, which means we need to free up a high slot. Uh, let's see, so clear the group. Take one laser off. Uh, shift left click, let's regroup the weapons and drag the crystals back in and we also need a mining laser. I don't have enough CPU. It might help if I weren't carrying around a relic analyzer anymore. There we go. And let's stick on a cap, cap recharger. So something I forgot to mention about the basics of ship fittings. Obviously your ship only has a certain number of slots. You have high power slots, mid medium power slots, low power slots. A low power module will only go in a low power slot. A medium power module will only go in a medium power slot. A high power module will only go in a high power slot and never the thrice shall meet. Thrain. I guess it's thrain. Never the thrain shall meet. However, they also use a couple of fitting resources. Power grid measured in megawatts and central processing unit measured in teraflops. My ship uh, only has 149.5 teraflops and 57.5 megawatts. You can increase this further by training higher levels of CPU management and power grid management. Any other skills relating to power grid or CPU are skills to reduce the power grid of C or CPU requirements of various modules. Uh, but you can show info on a module and see how much CPU and power grid it's using up on your ship. By the way, the other thing I forgot to mention is that when you show info on a module not fit to your ship, such as you're showing info on it from the item hangar, or you're showing info on it from the market, it's showing you the base numbers without skills or bonuses coming into play. So this Spartan Reactor Capacitor Recharger 1 claims to require 9 teraflops. If I show info on it from my ship, from my fitting window, it claims to require 8.1 teraflops. The reason is, if I'm showing info on it from the fitting window, it's taking my skills and bonuses into account. Whereas out in the item hangar or out on the market, it doesn't do that. All right, so if you show info from the fitting window, your skills and bonuses are being taken into account anywhere else, and it is not. All right, I have everything I need. Let's undock. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Accept. Because they can offer me a mission, but if I warp out there without accepting the mission, there's going to be nothing but empty space. Also, this is in Arbaz, not Dipari. So set destination, Arbaz, add waypoint, Dipari. Close, undock. Uh, Stargate Arbaz. I don't need my cargo hold open.
All right. Work to location. And we have a bunch of asteroids. So, let's target lock an asteroid. And start mining. Now again, I suspect it's not the actual amount of time spent mining, but rather the activation or deactivation of a mining laser that will draw out this guy. I could be wrong. But that's the hypothesis I'm going with. By the way, these are Kernite asteroids, so if you decided to do this mission before some of the other missions in the business chain, uh, you can come back here... Uh, you can come back here with an actual mining frigate and actually mine the asteroids. Once you turn in the mission, though, these asteroids disappear, and if you come back here, you're just going to find empty space. So if you're going to mine the asteroids, you have to mine the asteroids first before you turn in the mission. Alright, so much for the turning it off and on theory. Oh wait, there he is! Boom. Sometimes the lay sometimes the graphics for Eve Online glitch out a little bit and sh appear to fire an extra time, but they haven't actually done any such thing. Uh, so let's open the cargo container and loot all. And you know what? I will save this as a safe spot. And let's turn off the mining laser and return to Depari. Once again, if you're going to mine these Kernite asteroids, you want to return with your venture and mine everything out before you complete the mission. Very important. All right, let's talk to the agent. Complete the mission. And request the next mission. And here, the agent wants us to manufacture... The, well, the agent will give us a blueprint copy to manufacture a, a Tormentor frigate from. And looking at the material requirements, you'll need Zydrine, Noxium, Isogen, Mexilon, Pyrite, and Tritanium. Uh, the Zydrine, you will probably want to buy off the market rather than venture into low security space to get it. I don't advise going into low security space this early in playing EVE Online unless you're being accompanied by a friend that you know from outside the game and that you trust. Alright, but all of the other minerals you should be able to mine on your own. You only need 11 Zydrine, so... Um that's not going to be terribly expensive. Uh, even at Depari prices, that's only going to run you about 12, 13,000 ISK right now. At least on the day that I recorded this. Sometimes CCP makes major changes to game mechanics that causes changes to the economy, and then prices shift as a result. 
But anyway, uh, you can gather the minerals and manufacture a tormentor. Uh, it is possible for you to strip your tormentor of all modules, repackage it, and hand that over to the agent, but I don't advise this. Uh, you can buy a fresh uh, a tormentor right off the market. Uh, I could get one for 350,000 interstellar credits, but the more common prices seem to be around 450,000. Uh, steep, it'll take out about a, th a little less than a third of my wallet, but that's an option. The slick way to do this, however, is that in the middle of the military chain, the military agent will give you a tormentor as a quest reward. So I advise holding off on this mission until we get to the military chain, and we will take care of that in the next episode. In the meantime, thank you for watching.